Being aware of how lenses affect perspective is super important when creating any kind of art. It'll help you to plan your shots better and also have more control in the visual language of what you're trying to communicate. In this video, we will take a look at how focal lengths work and how it changes the perspective of a particular shot. My hope is that it'll help you understand what's going on under the hood so that you can use it in your own art and projects. Let's begin. On cameras, you might have noticed this term called focal length and a bunch of numbers like 15 millimeters, 50 millimeters, or 200 millimeters. So what do these actually mean and what do they do? Let's first take a look at a very basic diagram of two different lenses shown from top down. The drawing might not be entirely accurate and it's definitely not to scale, but I just want to illustrate a point here. In this example, we have a 24 millimeter lens and a 200 millimeter lens indicated by the actual length here. As light passes through these lenses into the sensor, it's gonna do so in a way kinda like this. Now you can already see that these two produce very different angles and that's purely because of the focal length. The 24 millimeter lens is known as a wide angle sitting at 84 degrees and the 200 millimeter lens is known as a telephoto sitting at 12 degrees. One thing that's super important to note is that 50 millimeters is the normal view seen by the human eye. Anything above or below 50 millimeters is going to distort the image in perspective. So how does this affect our images? Well, I've set up a basic scene here in Blender of a small apartment block and a character standing on the street. Let's say we were across the road from this character and we were at the same eye line. I'm gonna set up three different cameras. One is gonna be at 50 millimeters since it's what we'd see, then a wide angle at 20 millimeters and finally a telephoto at 200 millimeters. When I take the photos, this is what we're left with. All of these photos are taken in the exact same position, so notice how they've affected the image. On first glance, it appears like it's only zooming in, and that's technically correct. But check out what happens when I decide to replicate the same framing for each camera. In these examples, I'm trying to get the bottom of the street to touch the bottom of our frames. This is when we really start to see how changing the focal lengths affects our image. The more we increase our focal length, the more things become compressed in the image. You'll notice that the distance between the curb and our character is shortening, and so is the side of this purple building right here. Simply put, the bigger a number in millimeters, then the narrower the field of view will be, and the smaller the number in millimeters, then the wider the field of view will be. So, what does this look like when we make our character the focal point instead of the street? Well, as you can see, a character remains roughly the same size, but everything around them becomes more compressed. A big takeaway I want you to notice is that in the 200 mm example, there is a truer sense of scale at the cost of compression. Now, I have to be a bit careful here because there are exceptions, but what I mean is the door size is more accurate in the telephoto than it is in the wide angle lens because it's not as distorted in perspective. But you might be saying, wouldn't the 50 millimeter lens be the most accurate? And yes, that's technically true, but in the context of art, it's easier to draw in telephoto because of how everything has become so compressed and flattened that we can actually compare it to each other. I'll expand on this now. In another quick example, let's take a look at how focal lengths affects scale. So these cubes here are all the same size, but because of perspective distortion, the 24 millimeter lens shrinks the cubes a lot more the 50 mm lens shows an accurate sense of distance as if we were looking at it in real life. And the 200 mm lens shows the scale of these cubes in relation to each other. Since the distance between them is compressed, it's actually hard to tell how far apart these are from each other. So while the sense of scale is more accurate as these cubes are the same size, we lose the distance between them and everything is flattened. This is why many landscape photographers choose a telephoto lens as it compresses vast distances of landscape, so we can have epic looking photos like this. Who's to say how far the distance is between our subject and this mountain? Is it hundreds of meters? Or maybe kilometers? This is really important for our art. And yes, these lenses also affect faces too. I'm gonna give you a quick tip, and if you're taking selfies, you should try and shoot them in 50 millimeters to appear the most normal, as if, you know, this is how you would look in the mirror. Telephoto lenses are gonna make you feel more square or flat. Or, you know, you could go the complete opposite way and become an anime protagonist that's about to go berserk. 
Okay, so we can see how the perspective changes between our shots, but why does this happen? So I have a five point perspective sphere here for a demonstration, and I'm going to overlay a frame right here, which is going to be our handy 16 by nine canvas size. When we see the entire sphere, this is the most extreme version of a wide angle lens that we can get. You might have even seen these in some GoPro videos where the perspective distortion looks kind of like this. And when I start to zoom in, these lines are going to become less and less curved until they are practically parallel. So this is exactly what's happening whenever we change focal lengths on a camera lens. Since we are so zoomed in, there's not much perspective to calculate here. And this is also what's happening with telephoto. If I zoom back out into a wide angle, we can still see the flat section right here. So all telephoto lenses are doing is simply taking this section here and stretching it to fit our picture plane. Or the opposite is true for wide angle. We're expanding our frame and then making it smaller to fit our picture plane. This is why our earlier shots feel like they're just zooming in. Because yes, technically they are, especially since they were all taken standing in the same spot. But if I wanted to capture the same framing and subject matter, I will physically need to move my wide angle lens closer and my telephoto lens further back. If we extend our field of view from our cameras in Blender, we can even see how this captures our picture plane, which in this case is just a 16 by nine frame. Now, when it comes to art, I want you to be more mindful with the lenses you choose and what you're trying to communicate. And of course, there are no hard and fast rules, but here are some things I generally think about when considering lenses. For wide angle lenses, because they showcase much more of an environment, it'll be a good idea to use them when, for example, you're in an interior and to capture more of the room. They can also be used to make something feel dramatic and big or small. These kinds of angles are also used in POV shots from an animal since they would see much more of the environment than us. You might have seen this in chase sequences, for instance, in animation or film. And also wide angle lenses are chosen in lots of different pieces of concept art since once again, they showcase much more of an environment. Here are some really good examples by G. Lulian. On the flip side, telephoto lenses are great for compressing things together and showing a quote unquote, truer sense of scale in relation to each other. And again, there are some caveats here because it is also being compressed. In real life, you might want to use this for any kind of wildlife photography, as you can really zoom in close to your subject, you know, without scaring them away. And I have this really awesome picture of a kookaburra that I took. In this piece here by Thomas Chamberlain Keen, the subject is also painted with a telephoto lens in mind, and it creates a very dramatic silhouette of this character walking towards us. When you are sketching, you know, you could get in all kinds of nitty gritty measurements and perspective grids, but the simplest way I can describe it is, if your vanishing points are closer together, it's a wide angle lens. But if your vanishing points are further apart, then it starts to become more telephoto. It's not entirely necessary to think of a specific number or to try and accurately draw a perspective grid to fit that. But as long as you're aware of wide angle versus normal human eye versus telephoto, you'll have a lot more control when setting up compositions. There are also ways to get a 50 millimeter lens using this thing called the cone of vision. And Dan Beardshaw has a really great tutorial on how to actually do this, which I'll link in the description below. I also highly recommend these two videos from Feng Zhu and Realm Pictures as well, which do go on to explain this in greater detail. Anyway, that's gonna bring us to the end of this video and I really hope this one helped you out. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or on my Instagram at Daniel Ang Art. Until next time, everyone, take care and stay safe.